Our bread of life can be found in Luke 24, verses 1 through 6. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in dazzling clothing. And as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee. This is the word of God. Amen. Our title today is Let Us Restore the Faith of Resurrection. And with this message, let us begin our Easter Lord's Day sermon. Today commemorates the day that Jesus overcame the power of death through resurrection. Today is Easter Lord's Day. Our Lord's resurrection gives us the ultimate hope that we too can live eternally, even after death. So with this best gift that could ever be received, may we first give thanks to God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May we celebrate this time with our sincerest thanksgiving, praise, and glory to our Father God. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Dear Saints, do you know when we are redeemed from sin and death? When we accurately believe in the Son Jesus as Christ, who is our Messiah, when we can confess this with all our heart, then this redemption takes place. If we look at the history of redemption and how people began to believe in Christ, you can see there are steps or stages as how people began to believe in Jesus. And we see this when we read the Bible closely. The first step was viewing Jesus as a prophet. Matthew 16, 13 through 14. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea, Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist. And who is John the Baptist? He is the one that came to witness about Christ six months before Christ was born. And others, Elijah, but still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So these are the answers of whom the people thought Jesus was. So what was the next step? The next step was to confess Jesus as the Christ. Matthew 16, 15 through 16. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Here, Peter clearly confessed that Jesus was the Christ. And this was during the time when Jesus had not yet been crucified on the cross. However, Peter confessed Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God, the long-awaited Messiah. So then, how was Peter able to make this confession when everyone during this time only viewed Jesus as a prophet? How did Peter know that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God? 
it is because this confession did not come from Peter's own faith. But it was God the Father who instilled this confession in Peter. Matthew sixteen seventeen tells us, And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So we see that God the Father allowed Peter to confess that Jesus is Christ. However, there is one important fact we must know here. After Peter's great confession of faith, Jesus told his disciples, including Peter, not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. Once the disciples found out Jesus was Christ, of course they wanted to testify of this, but Jesus warned them not to tell anyone. There was something lacking still. That is why they still, at this time, could not confess who Jesus was. Matthew 16, 20, Then he warned the disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. Jesus warned them, do not tell anyone. The purpose of Jesus' coming to this earth was, of course, to make everyone believe that he was the Christ, the Messiah. This is the very purpose of Jesus' coming. And Peter confessed this. So then why did Jesus tell his disciples not to tell anyone that he was Christ. The reason is simple. It is because the time had not yet come for this to be revealed. The time had not come. So then, when was the right time to witness that Jesus was the Christ. It was after Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection three days later. Without this, Jesus warned the people, do not testify of this. In fact, after Jesus ascended, after his resurrection, the disciples testified of this fact Fervently. Acts 2 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Yes, Peter confessed Jesus was the Christ but they could not tell this to anyone until Jesus was crucified. And Acts 17, 3, explaining and giving evidence that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead and saying, this Jesus whom I am proclaiming to you is the Christ. Jesus is Christ, but first, before they testified of this, they gave evidence by explaining that Christ suffered on the cross and he resurrected from the dead. And then they proclaimed that Jesus is Christ. And Acts 18.5 tells us, But when Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began devoting himself completely to the word, solemnly testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. So, only after Jesus resurrected was it possible to bear witness through evidence 
that he was the Christ. Before this, Jesus warned them not to tell anyone, and this is why. But why did it have to be like this? It is because the core of their confession and witnessing to make people believe was that Jesus is the Christ who died yet resurrected. Without this, then they could not testify who Jesus truly was. So that is why Jesus asked his disciples to not testify prior to his death and resurrection. And here is the final step or stage in which we believe Jesus as the Christ. This is the final step where we can truly confess Jesus is the Christ. And that is by having a faith of resurrection that shares in the suffering of Jesus. Until we have this faith of resurrection, we cannot truly believe Jesus as our Messiah. So when did Peter confess Jesus was Christ? So for the first time before Jesus died and resurrected, Peter confessed this and Peter also confessed this. When Jesus revealed his plan that he would die and resurrect. And why did this happen? Because Peter before did not have a truly understanding heart when he confessed. But afterwards, when he saw that Jesus has resurrected after his crucifixion, he could truly understand that Jesus was the Christ. Matthew 16, 20 through 21. Then he warned the disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. So we see that after Jesus warned the disciples that he should tell no one that he was Christ, Jesus then began to tell the disciples how he would suffer and die and be resurrected on the third day. So why did Jesus reveal this? It is because Peter confessed that Jesus was Christ. So now Jesus had to explain why he was the Christ. But what did Peter do at this time? Yes, Peter confessed Jesus was Christ. But he and the other disciples rejected the work that Christ came to fulfill, and that was to die and resurrect. And when this work was rejected, at that moment, Peter became Seder, Satan. Peter became Satan, who stands in the way of Jesus' work of redemption. When before, he had confessed that Jesus is Christ. Matthew sixteen twenty three. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan! You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's. After Jesus told them that he had to die and suffer 
and resurrect? What happened? Peter tried to stop this because he thought, in his mind, these were the right words to say, but it wasn't. And after Jesus defined the final stages of his ministry and his believers, this is found in Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Confessing Jesus as our Christ is not the only thing we must do. We must also have faith in resurrection, believing that Jesus' death and his resurrection was the redemptive work that leads us to be true followers and believers. After all, what is the truth of those who have faith in resurrection? It is the verse we read just now, Matthew 16, 24. Sacrifice and devotion to deny oneself to take up one's cross and to walk together in the way of the Lord's suffering. Dear beloved saints, faith in resurrection does not simply mean having faith that Jesus resurrected. It also means that we have to have a faith that endures suffering so that we can die with the Lord and allow him to live in us. Peter and the other disciples expected to only partake in the glory of the Messiah. They didn't expect to suffer or die because of the Messiah. They only wanted the glory that came with being next to Jesus. But they rejected and definitely did not want to suffer in any way because of him. They only wanted to receive the benefits of knowing Jesus. Saints, on this Easter Lord's Day of 2022, what stage do you and I need to be at? Beyond the stage of being able to confess Jesus as Christ, believing that Jesus resurrected, we must be at a stage even past this. We must have a faith of resurrection, meaning we must willingly participate in the dying of ourselves and resurrect in the Lord. to truly glorify Jesus Christ, to truly believe in his resurrection, we have to receive his suffering. We have to let our old selves die and allow Jesus to live in us. And that is how we have a faith of resurrection. During the three years of Jesus' public life, he made himself known to his disciples in this way. They knew him as one who heals the sick and casts out demons. They knew him as one who raises the dead, one who forgives sins through the word. That he was the Lord of the Sabbath and that he was able to work on the Sabbath and that he was the one baptized with the Holy Spirit. These disciples saw all these things. So in a way we can say that they saw 80% of the things that Jesus accomplished out of the 100 that he was supposed to do. And Peter believed in it all. 
Peter saw it, he witnessed it, and he believed in it. Matthew 16, 16. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. This is proof that Peter believed all 80% of what was done out of the 100 that Jesus was to accomplish on this earth. So Jesus did his works. Peter witnessed this and he believed all that he saw. So at this point, the 80% that Peter saw came out through confession in Matthew 16, 16. However, there was still 20% that Jesus did not fulfill doing as of yet when he was on this earth. From Jesus' point of view, this 20% which the disciples did not understand or believe in yet, this presented darkness in their faith. And why was this? It was because the 20% of work that was to be accomplished in the future, these disciples may or may not believe because of it. So that 20% of works that still was not completed, this presented possible darkness in their faith. Let us look at Peter. Up until this time, Peter believed in all 80% of what Jesus had done. So Peter even confessed who Jesus was. So only 20% remained. But Peter rejected this 20%, didn't he? So he became Satan. What was Peter's illusion? Why couldn't he get past this 20%? His illusion was that he believed, since he believed in 80% of what Jesus had done thus far, that he had believed in all 100%. The moment he believed in this, he was mistaken and became Satan. And darkness entered him, and he became one who stood in the way of Jesus' path to redemption. And you and I can also be like this. We should not rely on the fact that just because we believe well now, it will be this way forever. If we are up to 80% of what God has accomplished in our lifetime so far, we must understand that there is still a remaining 20% that God will do. We, like Peter, don't know when darkness will enter us. And we do not know when or where we're going to stumble because of this 20% of work that has not been fulfilled yet. That is why 1 Corinthians 10, 12 records the following. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed that he does not fall. You have believed 80% thus far, but do not believe that is all. There is still a remaining 20% that you can stumble upon. And Matthew nineteen thirty says, But many who are first will be last, and the last first. We believe we are first. We believe like all 80%, just like Peter. But if we become proud like this, ignorant like this, then the remaining 20% of works that are to be done in our lifetime, we may stumble because of this, and then Matthew 19.30 may occur in our lives. How did Peter, who believed all 80% of what he saw, Show us confidence of faith in Jesus. Peter said, even if you go to prison or even to death, I will follow you. This was a great confession. 
But this was only confessed because of his pride. It was not because he truly believed in who Jesus was. So that is why Peter rejected Jesus. And Jesus prophesied this fateful moment when he told Peter before the chicken crows, you will deny me three times. So how was Peter able to recover his faith in the end? It was only because of Jesus's earnest intercessory prayer. It was not because of what Peter did. Luke 22, verses 31 through 32. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail and you, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. See, this was an intercessory prayer to Peter from Jesus. He said that your faith may not fail. I have prayed for you. This is why Peter was recovered. Peter's faith that was filled up to 80%, it led him to believe and confess that Jesus is the Christ. This is a great confession and work up to this time for Peter. So 80% of believing, having faith, is a great accomplishment. But Peter's lacking of 20% from a full 100% faith led Peter to reject Jesus. So Peter, when rejecting Jesus' death on the cross, also rejected his resurrection because he was unable to shoulder the burden of Jesus' suffering. And this was because of Peter's lingering lack of faith, his lingering 20% lack of faith. So then darkness creeped in, and Satan was able to take hold of Peter. Because of this lingering 20% lack of faith, this led him to deny and reject Jesus on three separate occasions, but Peter repented and was able to use again due to Jesus' intercessory prayers. That is why resurrection, our faith in resurrection is so important. If we don't have this, then we will stumble with the remaining 20% of God's work that is to be revealed. And we must know it is the same for us. Jesus, even to this day, prays intercessory prayers for you and I. So let us not deviate from the path of faith like Peter once did. Let us not reject our belief in Jesus, but let there be grace restored in our lives. Romans eight thirty four. Christ, who prayed fervently for Peter, also prays like this for us. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, yes. Rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. See, he prays for us as well. So when did Peter grow? from a level of 80% faith to a 100% type of faith. This is after the events found in Matthew 26, verse 75. 
Matthew twenty six seventy five. And Peter remembered the word which Jesus had said, Before rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Peter, who had once confessed that Jesus is Christ, he is now rejecting Jesus. And he was warned of this by Jesus. So now he is weeping bitterly. But because Jesus loved Peter, through his intercessory prayers, Peter was recovered. And after the 20% of darkness in Peter left him, Peter received the Holy Spirit and boldly testified once again that Jesus was the Christ. It was at this time that the work of evangelizing 3,000 people in one day took place. So we must know that when our faith in resurrection is also restored, when we restore our faith in resurrection, then miracles in our lives will also begin again. We must believe in this fact. We cannot only believe that Jesus was crucified and died. But we must also believe that Jesus rose again from this death. This is a more important fact. So when we have this faith in the resurrection of our Lord, then miracles will occur in our lives. Dear saints, if the word that we have received thus far does not touch our hearts, and this word that we receive, that we feel it is irrelevant to us, then that 20% of darkness is in us and it will remain in us. Even if we had an 80% level of faith, like Peter, if we do not fill it all the way to the brim, we will deny and reject Jesus. But also like Peter, when the grace of being reminded of the word works in us, then the 20% darkness in us will disappear. Please believe in this. Because this is the faith of resurrection that our resurrect resurrected Lord gives us today. And this type of faith only lives in us when our old selves die. Because of our sins, we can only have great faith. We can only have this faith and resurrection when we cry out and pray for it. That is why we must rid ourselves of our sins, get rid of the pride and greed within us. Because we have no strength or ability in us to rid ourselves of our sins on our own. Please understand that a life that only wants to walk on the easy, comfortable path of life will never achieve a faith of resurrection. In the midst of failure, discouragement, and frustration, living only on a faith that is up to 80%, we will definitely stumble due to the 20% that is missing. When we rise from our current situations and confess that the word was given to us for a reason and purpose, then we, like Peter, must allow our old sinful selves to disappear. 
We must repent and believe that Jesus will give us the faith of resurrection through his intercessory prayers. Today, on this holy Easter Sunday, I challenge you to remember all the word that you have received and then realize that the word given to you was to resolve your pain so you can recover your faith again, just like Peter did. The pride, our arrogance, our loss of feeling for Jesus' suffering during this time, our indifference to the resurrection of our Lord on this day. May we have this all die in us and may Christ fully resurrect in our lives. And when this happens, when Christ fully resurrects within us, may we enjoy the grace and joy that comes on this holy day. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear loving Father God, we give you great thanks. Today, in this year of 2022, on this holy Easter Lord's Day, the faith of resurrection we have once forgotten. You have reminded us, and we thank you for this. We have lived confessing that Jesus is Christ, but during this time when Jesus went through his ultimate suffering, when he was raised upon the cross, when he was crucified, do we not live forgetting this, but lived in our own arrogance, have been ignorant of the suffering and pain that we have caused Jesus once again, our ill-lived lives. May you help us repent of this. May you allow us to not live like this again, but may we be those who live our lives to the brim of faith, not only 80%, but the full 20%, and may we truly be ones who have a faith of resurrection. The lives that we have lived in the past, may it all be forgotten, repented of, and may we live in the full resurrection of our Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us give glory to God. <clears throat>